I'm Ranch Lisa, and I'm gonna show you what I pack in my bags when I go off into the woods to go trail riding on my dirt bike. And I actually got a message from Amanda asking, what do I bring with me on the trails? So it really is all about the experiences that you go through when it comes to trail riding. What happens? What bike breaks down? Or what part do you need to replace? That sort of thing. So I encourage you to go out without your significant partner, without your husband, without your boyfriends, and go with some gal pals, if you're a woman rider. Bring all the tools and then you'll start to learn of the things that you actually need. Now, everything's again by trial and error. And yeah, let's talk about it. Let's talk about what I bring on my trail rides and why. <laughs> why I ride with two different packs. Now there are reasons why I ride two different types of packs. So the first one is this vest. So you'll usually see me riding with a vest. So this is Fox. I do like it. I like that the weight is distributed everywhere rather than just on my back. I have a very sensitive neck and traps um, due to whiplash uh, issues. So I don't like to have a whole lot sitting on my shoulders because it can strain my neck. Oh, just doing this right now, my neck is quite stiff. Anyway, so I like that the weight is distributed everywhere rather than just on the pat on the back. The only problem is with this type of vest is I'm limited with space. All right, next up is the Layette Core 1.5 Hydration Pack Reservoir. This is like a fanny pack, and I absolutely love it, but it's a pack that isn't my preferred for long distance trail rides. So if I'm going into the woods and I know it's gonna be like a four to five hour trail ride, I'll bring my vest, just because it has a bigger water hold holding tank because it has a bigger reservoir um, for my water. And also I can hold a little bit more as far as tools, snacks, that sort of thing. But what, if I'm doing like a quick burn, let's say like an hour or two hour ride, I'll bring this guy. And I love that it sits on my hips, on my back rather than on my shoulders because again, I have a, a weaker neck and traps and I just don't like a whole bunch of stuff on my shoulders. So I absolutely love this. And again, I use this actually in my Endure Park. I'll bring it out with me all the time. This is my second option when it comes to riding woods and trails. I do bring a rope. Now this isn't a long rope. I would say bring something longer than this because if you're anything like me, somebody is gonna break down. It's usually me that breaks down. So um, either it's running out of gas, spelled spark plugs, um, that sort of thing. Things can go wrong so quick. So having a rope, tow yourself out if you're with your riding buddy. Always ride with somebody, okay? Don't ride by yourself because things go wrong. Things can go sideways real quick. So having a strap of some sort that can help tow you out, pull you out of any type of sticky situation. I also bring heat packs. So these are hand warmers. I actually have been riding in the winter dirt biking. So um, I always carry heated packs with me. Another thing that I don't have at the moment, but I always have is spark plugs. Okay, so this is an empty box. I just was cleaning out my pack, but spark plugs, oh my gosh, I cannot highly recommend bringing a spark plug, maybe have a few of them on hand. Fucking spark plug. There we go, I found it. I found a spark plug. It wasn't tucked in one of my pockets, so always have a spark plug because you never know when you might need it because it's going to save you or your buddy now of course i don't want to miss this but always having a water pack on you or water bottles but um if you have a pack or a camel pack whatever you want to call it um with a hydration reservoir always having that filled up with water and here is a tip that actually i just learned last week 
<laughs> is fill up your hydro with ice so that it keeps cool. Because if something were to happen, let's say an injury of some sort, then you can use your hydro pack as a ice pack or something that's cold that can help with that wound or whatever it is that might've happened on the trail. So for instance, I thought I broke my finger, might have actually bro broke my finger, but I didn't go to the hospital. Anyways, um, Shannon had a great idea that I stuck my hand into her pack, not into her water, but stuck my hand in beside her water pack and I was able to cool off my finger while I was going through shock and that really helped. So if you are gonna go on a trail ride, I would highly suggest just throwing some ice cubes in there just to keep it cool so that if there was an injury, hopefully you don't have any injuries or anyone does, but that way you can keep any wounds cool, keep the inflammation down and uh, just so you can feel better and reassess what needs to happen after that incident. Okay, speaking of injuries, <laughs> because this just happened, always having Advil, Tylenol, but probably Advil would be the best um, on you. Now, again, when I experienced injuring my clutch finger, I didn't think I had any Advil on me, but I actually did. And it was tucked inside one of my pockets. So again, when I was cleaning this out today to make this video, I found them. So if you're gonna bring Advil, make sure you have a pocket that is like for safety only. So that way, when you are going through something like a, a traumatic event, now, I don't wanna call it traumatic, but if you do come across an incident where somebody is injured when you're injured, uh, make sure you know where everything is because in that moment when you're trying, when you have a little bit of a panic moment, you're trying to find all the things, it can be so overlooked and I would not have known that I had Advil in this pocket that was tucked at the very back. So if you are going to create some type of safety or um, yeah, some type of safety kit, just know where you put it on your pack. So um, I don't ha necessarily have a safety kit because my pockets on my vest doesn't allow for that. But now again, that I've experienced what I've experienced, uh, I'm gonna dedicate one pocket to a survival safety kit, okay? So, and while I'm here, I'm going to add to my Advil bag. And something that I wish I would have had when I did injure my finger was tape. So I highly recommend getting some type of tape, whether it's electrical tape. Um, this is Band-Aid tape actually, but uh, it wouldn't hold anything on my dirt bike. So I would prefer getting electric tape, but yeah, add that to your kit, electric tape. It will go such a long way when you need it. Because of that injury that I went through and I was like, my hands were shaking, I had to eat something and <laughs> It was sugar, I'm not gonna lie. I haven't gone grocery shopping and I haven't been doing any woods riding lately. I have not been on any trails for like eight weeks. I think it was an eight week period from my last ride. Anyways, I opened up some of these. I had them in my pack and I also had a fruit bar. Now, do I recommend on having these as snacks when you are out trail riding? No, this is all that I had. It was my kid's snack drawer. I grabbed whatever I had. I usually have a Lara bar, a Cliff bar, things that have a high protein and sugar ratio, but because I had nothing, I just grabbed what I could and it was these guys. So I'm thankful that I scarfed them down when I was treating my finger because um, I, I needed it. I needed something to kind of calm my nerves a little bit. And I was able to ride out the rest of that trail, which I'm super grateful for. That was incredible. Um, because I was in a lot of pain. So snacks, but make sure they are high protein. And yes, sugar is okay, but just a higher protein snack will be so much better and more beneficial than just sugar. All right, next, 
are different sizes of zap straps. You never know when you'll need a zap strap. So I recommend on packing different sizes. I usually have the big ones, but um, I just haven't done my shopping. And I think that's what I'm gonna do during my downtime when the season's over here, is I'm going to reorganize and repack my bag. I'm kind of doing that right now, but yeah. All right, so before I got my KTM XCW, I didn't have a headlamp on my 105, my 85 XS. SX? XS. <laughs> Why can't I remember? Anyways, I didn't have a light on my KTM 105 and 85. So with the 150 KTM XCW, I do have a headlamp, but it's always nice to pack extra headlamps um, so that you can put it on your helmet. There's some really fancy gadgets, I believe from Mountain Lab Gear that have ones that you can actually mount onto your helmet or on your bars. I would love to get myself a set of those, but for right now, um, yeah, just a regular headlamp will do. So keep that in your survival kit in your bag. Now we're gonna get into tools. Every bike has a certain set of tools so definitely have that on hand. Um, I am gonna show you, I do have an easy pull clutch lever, the, mountain, the Midwest Mountain Engineer clutch. And so I need to bring my little, I don't know if you guys can see that. This Allen key, okay? So um, if you have a, an aftermarket clutch or brake lever or anything that's kind of aftermarket, bring the tools to adjust or to fix that because more often than not, the tools that come with your bike don't have the right tools for that aftermarket piece. So I bring this guy with me always because there are times where I need to adjust my clutch lever depending on how hot it's running or how cold it is. And yeah, so my tool, this little tool guy goes on the top pocket of my vest here. Other tools, again, uh, my KTM comes with a bunch of Torx pieces, um, but this is what the KTM came with. So I bring those with me at all times. And something that's in my other pack are, again, more tools. I just haven't been riding trails enough to transfer everything over, but I have more tools in here. Again, to take out my spark plugs and any other bolts that I need, okay? All right, depending on the season, if it's raining, if it's, you know, fall, winter, or spring, I guess, so all three seasons rather than summer. Um, if it's cooler temperatures, I will bring a jacket, like a, kind of like a rain jacket. So um, I wear this actually quite often in the winter and fall if it is raining or kind of gross out. And the beauty about this jacket, it really can squish down and I'm able to fit this in with my water pack on my vest. And it's honestly like such a lifesaver when either I dress too warm, I can take it off, or if I'm feeling cold, I can throw that on. And it fits nicely in this pack. Because like I said, um, these vests don't have a whole lot of holding space for everything. Um, the pockets are quite small. There's another one here, here, and here. This is where, like I mentioned, I hold that little Allen key for my clutch lever. And I usually put my keys in this front pouch. Before I get into what I should be bringing, I also bring all my batteries and I throw this into a, a plastic bag so that they don't get wet. I film a lot. I film with my GoPro and with my vlogging camera that you guys are watching through right now. So batteries. I always pack extra batteries. Now there are two items that I always say, damn, I wish I had that is number one, a saw. 
the amount of times that we come across logs that are blocking the trail, um, I wish I had a saw. Now, if you're riding with a group, everyone's gonna have something different in their packs. And my good friend, Sam, she actually had a saw in her bag and we were able to use that the one time. But not everyone carries a saw. And so when you do come across a log, sometimes you can't get over it. Sometimes you have to turn around. Just like what my buddy Shannon and I did on our last trail ride. We couldn't go any further because we just didn't have a saw with us. So um, yeah, saw, again, it doesn't fit in my pack. There are those chainsaws. They're really small and they can compact down really well. Now, the other thing is um, my Garmin InReach. So this is something I use all the time when I'm sledding, but when it comes to dirt biking, I rarely use it. Now, don't ask me why. I do ride a lot with no cell service, so um, yeah, inReach would be great. But again, I am kind of limited on my space now. I could just clip this onto my vest, which maybe I should. Um, I'm not saying it's something you shouldn't bring. If you are not feeling as confident when it comes to dirt biking with your gal pals, um, maybe you know you have, this is your first time riding or you're just kind of getting used to riding without your um, significant other, without your male partner, then I would highly suggest bringing this. I have brought it before in the past, but like I said, I have a lot of um, experience I'm not saying I'm a professional at woods riding. I am not, but I have a lot of experience on some really poopy situations that we've always been able to get ourselves out no matter the situation. But knock on wood that it's been nothing severe or anything that's like immediate. Which brings me to the next point is, yeah, you know, I should be bringing it because you just never know. You never know when you need um, search and rescue. And that's kind of what it is with, you know, dirt biking and sledding is um, it's, even though it's like an, indiv and it's an individual sport, it's more of a team sport. No one's gonna leave you there, right? We're all there to help each other out, to get each other out safely, especially coming home to our loved ones and making sure everyone's safe. So, so yeah, those are the two items that um, I should be bringing with me. I think that's it. I think I covered both packs. That's what I take with me when I'm in the woods. As I have mentioned before, I've had a lot of situations that I had to get out and we had to act fast and figure things out. And I would just say, if you are going out in the trails, you're not feeling as confident, go with a couple people, um, plan out. Maybe you guys can get together a, you know, an evening or the morning of and plan out what everyone is gonna bring. And maybe if you all bring one of each, like maybe one person brings the inReach, one pr person brings a saw, and then the other one has the medical or survival kit, that sort of thing, then you can be as prepared as possible. But it's not until we go through some experiences, some of those unlucky situations that are gonna make you realize what you actually need in your packs versus what you don't need. Yeah, that's all I got for you today is get out there, go ride and have fun. And this is all a learning lesson. This is, like I said, you just can't be prepared for everything. It's all about learning from those experiences and adapting and evolving. Last year, I came out with a video about broken pipes. And so over there, I kind of go through or talk about some of the things that I have done on my dirt bikes when it comes to, you know, spark plugs being towed out of trail rides, that sort of thing. So you can watch that next over here or over here. Yeah, I think it's over here. And you can learn a little bit more of what I've gone through when it comes to being rescued because it's been more times than just once. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching and thanks again to Amanda for suggesting this video. And I will catch you guys on the next episode. Okay, bye.